Welcome, everyone. This is Bart Bettiger with Tile Letter Magazine, and I have my guest for our October issue of Tile Letter One to One, and it is Woody Sanders from DW Sanders in the Atlanta area. Woody, thank you for being my guest, and thank you for joining me. Bart, thank you. We appreciate always the opportunity to talk tile. That's one of our favorite subjects. <laughs> well, that's, and that's what we're doing. We're, we're talking tile. And uh, what I'd like to ask you first is just for the our readers and, and our, our, our listeners out there on uh, social media and on YouTube, tell, tell me a little bit about your background, Woody, how you got into tile. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I know you were involved in NTCA years ago, but really this a little bit more on you, your background, how you got into tile and a little bit about DW Sanders and the type of work that you guys do. Well, thank you. Uh, um, if you can kind of see over my shoulder, there's a tile sitting there that I'm pointing to right now. That was uh, my grandfather's company, which was called A.W. Cook uh, Tile, and, and they did shower doors. Uh, he started in Atlanta in 1929. Um, I am adopted. Um, they were my mother. That's what my mother's father. And when I was, I was, as I was coming up and growing up, the family uh, took me in and kind of said, I don't know, maybe I was free labor, you know, you never know, quite know. Um, and, but I just kind of um, honestly kind of was drawn to it very early on. Um, the family had different business uh, enterprises here in Atlanta. We owned a tile distributor. We owned American Only and Tiles of Georgia at the time. My uncle did. And my grandfather had A.W. Cook. I actually started in the tile business unloading box cars of Corey Tile um, um, with actually in my cohort, and that was Greg Dickerson, Dole Dickerson's son at the time. So, so we that's what we did as summer jobs, and then or I very much went from that side back over to the install. I was much more interested, in, much more interested in the installation of tile than I was unloading box cars of Corey Tile. <laughs> so, uh, um, and and so. Uh, um, um, I was able at, at, in my high school years to, to do my apprenticeship. So I was able to kind of get the early on uh, aspects on it. Um, and my cousin, Dan Cook, had a company called Draco Tile that I did my apprenticeship up under at the time. Uh, from there, I went off to school because I, I think it was expected of me more than anything and would work for Haley Brick and Tile up in Athens at the time doing work uh, to supplement my college money. Um, um, and uh, after that, um, my cousin and Dole actually had Sea Cure of Georgia. So boy, I'm taking, I'm throwing old school, right? Old names out to you. Um, great, and great I went, history. Uh, yeah, yeah, after Sea Cure, uh, I got, he, he said, hey, come to work for me. And I did at, when I came out of college. And, um, and there was a guy over there in Secure. There were two guys over in Secure. One guy was named Bob Vecchio, who was an incredible chemist for them. And there was this other guy who's a friend of yours who I would drive nuts named Lay Hightower. And Lay, so, I, so if you kind of look at it, I understood how to install tile, but I had no idea why I did or why we did what we did. And, and, and you think this is the early onset of, of Palmer's this early onset of, you know, methicel, which was the water retention agent in, in grouts and mortars, right? But the chemistry was being involved. And I would just wear him. We had this phone line where I could dial uh, Houston at the time, which is where Secure was, right? And I could, I could dial him and ask questions. So I'd wear him out without being charged. Because, you know, back then, we, we don't, you, you know, you don't realize that you know, people think over oh, the day we just you and I just pick up the phone and call anywhere in the United States. But back then, you know, you had inter, you know you were getting charged by the minute for a long distance car. So uh, my cousin, because we communicated with them every day, had this you know this phone line where you could talk to them toll free. So I would just wear layout back in the day and, and that. I mean, I and he was he was so here's this great mentor I had technically. Um, I, I actually would do a small stint with Joe, and Joe would help me get on with my pay. And that, and and I worked with Mape uh, and Lou Quillard. Mape was a mentor, so I wore him out when I was with Mape. Uh, then uh, Griff Williams would see me speak somewhere, and he would come to me with custom building products and hired me to take over the Eastern technical services for custom building products. For I did that for about seven years. Um, great job, great growing ground, Baron Arakawa. 
uh, Steve Taylor, there was a lot of mentors again there. And you notice the common theme. I'm looking for mentors because I know things, but I'm really looking to know more. Exactly. Um, and uh, had mentors. Griff Williams was an excellent guy. Uh, they gave me a bunch of rope so I could hang myself and were never and were great bosses and support me as I did hang myself. And but after about I, I worked for them for about seven years, Bart, and I and and I and I, and I was seeing the problem, I think the hard guys, technical guys that we, we don't, we, we talk technical, we, but we don't ever think kind of how emotionally technical guys think, but you get disappointed on the technical service side when all you hear is problems and complaints and failures. That's okay. essentially the, 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 what they deal with on a day in day out basis, right? They're trying to avoid problems, avoid complaints, avoid failures, but they see them. And then, and that, and I, and I was traveling, about 50 years a week at the time with doing kind of the dog and pony or the seminar work, somewhat marketing, but, but, but very much what NTCA does today on the training. Um, and I just got burned out and said, you know, um, I, I, I found myself drawn back to really what do I love? And I really enjoy the installation of it. And then just uh, uh, like most guys, out here start as a bucket and trial guy. I literally start and said, I'm going to open up a tile contracting business and just went in and, and, and that's, you know, today that's 27 years ago. So, so, so you came from the setting material side. I mean, I know you, uh, that was a really good background expl explanation, but when you went into contracting, you really went in just by yourself, bucket and trial. And then did you, and then you started hiring people. How many employees do you have today? What's your business model like today and the type of work that you guys do? Um, so 27 years later, we're 22, about 11 crews. Okay. Um, and support staff on the back office, which is basically three of us, four of us with my bookkeeper. Um, um, we uh, s s real early on, uh, interesting enough uh, uh, to give you kind of a full swing started, couldn't keep a helper because they weren't great. I, I had a family support and I would work mad hours, like seven days a week, kind of crazy. It's not recommended, not right. And my, my, my father, my father said to some to me, said, he goes, how'd you do? I go, boy, I, I'm doing great. Can't, I'm working seven days a week. And he made a statement to me, he says, and how long do you think you can keep doing that? Exactly. Great. Point. And, and that, and that was the first step to finding my value, right? It, that, that this just can't be about how hard I work, that I needed to learn how to work smart. And it was probably a, a, an instrument. And, and, and it's interesting that I can say that to you as if he said it to me yesterday. So we started, look, so I, so he said, what you need to do is train people in what you do and manage them. And that, and I, that's what I started literally from that point, I literally started, okay, kid, I, finding people and was fortunate to find a, a group of guys that I, uh, um, actually Jamie DeSarno, who has been with me for 25 years now, he was one of my first helpers, uh, who is a actually senior project manager who is being groomed for the future. Um, Janice Hill, I found her six years ago, but I'll, I'll jump forward, but I started finding those guys because I was technically minded, I was teaching them TCNA handbook details. This is why we do it. And we were really always have followed that example of the handbook as to how are we going to solve these problems so so we were, were the, the industry our, our our company's very underpinned by that foundation bar everything we think everything we do it, it even comes across you know even uh, uh, leslie said so well you know it comes across in our tagline that has never changed from day one which is craftsmanship by the standards we don't just say craftsmanship we don't say the standards we say Craftsmanship can be done by the standards if you want that. So we play that when we still hold that tagline to the states on our business cards, on our stationery. It's on the way we think around here. And so while I'm thinking of it, Woody, when you talk about that, that sounds like training is a, a major component of your company. Uh, do you have, have you over the years had more success bringing people in brand new, fresh, knowing nothing about tile compared to hiring people that say, uh, have taught, been taught bad habits, if you will, or just different ways of doing tile? Uh, or what is your been your model of bringing people in? Yeah, you're right. Early on, um, we probably had pulled guys out of 
trial trades, not the tile industry, but uh, early on guys were guys that were actually out of epoxy flooring, industrial epoxy flooring. So they knew how to run a, a trial. They knew how to flat trial. They knew knew that. Um, I, and then we those were our better guys that we could take them not knowing much about tile. They had um, hand-eye coordination or skill set, right? They just need to be refined into how we were doing things. And, that's, and, and that model has proven uh, fast forward all the way to today, we're really looking for the guy that that has absolutely no background, that just has a real has a willingness to learn, has a willingness to we call it buying in here. We use that term quite a bit. It, uh, you'll notice I have these little taglines in my conversation that, that that well, you've been around me enough to know I always have taglines, right? Right, and and so we really are looking for. Uh, we have not been successful hiring. Um, supposedly, quote unquote, journeyman tile contractors. Now, that's probably a regional. I don't want to peg the world. The, right. you, you, that's a regional thing for us. We're better off finding that guy or that girl who wants to buy in. And then we put them through a program that's suited specifically for us, but hangs its framework and outline around NTCAU, C Ceramic Tile Education Foundation, ACT, uh, and that it, we, 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 if you will, reversed engineered our training. Y'all had developed the programs. We just reversed engineered into what we wanted to, what, what we needed to, to, to meet our particular uh, type of work because we're still teaching mud walls, mud floors, uh, the, the, those core, what, 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 what I consider core, core installation techniques because we still use them. I think your point is is really good, Woody, which is there's no one size fits all for a contractor. Uh, if you subcontract your labor out or if you don't have a training, uh, if you don't have a demonstrated commitment to training, uh, a training program, you're probably better off hiring you know, people with experience in the field. But if you so tell me a little bit, how much work is it to have a training program? Do you have a director of training or is that all coordinated by you? Uh, a little bit about what, what because if you're going to bring in new people, you have to have a training program. Um, that, that, yeah, that, you're that, absolutely that right. Online, but it also it's right there. I'm sure it's at your shop and I'm sure it's in the field. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I think um, fortunately um, she, uh, I had a, a uh, actually Jamie's daughter, Madison DeSarno was working for me for a well, way. My wife helped me for a little bit do uh, the front end outlines when we were building the program and kind of put it into spreadsheet format for me. Um, and then, and again, based and working with Becky, let's, let, let's don't, uh, let, 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 let's give Becky, you know, well, we might want to edit this out, but but we'll put but Becky, you know, Becky's been a great help and a great asset to us in that. So as everybody at NTCAs has. Um, but we we took it and said, I always say this, um, just like any good tile job, you work it in reverse. I want to know where my last cut's gonna be before I ever install my first tile. That's so that right. What do I'm what am I building? I'm building a I'm building a journeyman tile setter who I'm going to build into a master tile and stone setter. But the first step is I need to build the journeyman tile setter and that, and therefore we take that process and that all culminates in ceramic tile education foundation test. So that, so there's my, there's my end game. Now I'm going to reverse into getting them those skill sets to accomplish that test. And then we looked at that and broke it down and then, and then started saying, these are what we just broke a job apart and said, this is what I've got to teach you on. And then really the skills are, are very much, um, um, it, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's the uh, reiteration of the same skills. And then you're pushing them to the point of failure and then teaching them where they're wrong. Does that kind of make sense? So, so we're excellent answer. Uh, uh, yeah. I haven't heard of it saying work from the back in, into the beginning and have a plan how to get there, which segues to your support of the Ceramic Tail Education Foundation. You received an award for that uh, because you not only support the program by uh, uh, embracing your workers and having them take the T CTI test. And now you're actually talking, uh, uh, allowing us to use your facility 
uh, to try to grow the advanced certification for Tile Installers program, the ACT or the ACT program. Uh, so congratulations on the award, but tell me why you do, why you've supported CTE up and why you think certification is so important to our trade. Um, I'm embarrassed by the award. <laughs> uh, I really am. Um, I did not know if I had known, I probably wouldn't have showed up. Um, the, um, that's not why I did it. Well, um, I did it because I truly believe that we're an industry that is lost if we don't start changing the tide for the future and that because i'd honestly say bart we've lost the war already because here's what we say to the to the young people today we say hey come work it up for us in a tiered position which is illegal with no benefits with no and wear your body out so that we can be profitable. I, that's a very negative connotation and I don't want that. I mean, I agree with you. We have to change that rhetoric, right? Right, right. And that, and that rhetoric is, is too prominent. And what we've also said is, well, the way to, to any kind of future is through, the, the, or the only way, if you will, is through a college education or, or the thing. And, and, and yet there is honor and, and in, in, in my and in, in, in just you know there's a huge love for the trade and, and the guy and, and passion about what we do and we get to leave this this if, if done right we leave a product behind that lasts way beyond us we leave a legacy in every job we put down if you think about it and so we so with that in mind you know, it took me a while, like anybody, to grab in. I, did, I didn't just jump, and, and, and I think you have to be honest, I didn't just jump into SRAM Tile Education Foundation. I was a little resistant at, of it at first because I, because, because I came up a little more formally in my trade. And so I'm going, well, why do I need to prove myself, right? Exactly. I, I, I'm established. I have an established company. I'm doing fine. And then, but then I said, you know, but, but I'm aging out and, 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 and we've got to get these younger guys. And, and, and honestly, I didn't know how to do that. And that's what CTEP did. That's what we reversed en engineered to it. And, and, and there was, you know, um, look, Dan Welch, a lot of other guy, good guys you, you, that, 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 I, that I saw what they were doing and modeled it and then modeled it back for myself. And that. so, so I'm, I'm, I'm not the guy who's out here that invented this i'm the guy who's utilizing it and 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 taking advantage of it and building it for what i needed to do for me for me and that and and and, and so that moving forward so why did we all right we were sitting in a zoom meeting which i didn't really understand last year when COVID hit and we were sitting in some of the board meetings with ctef and that and 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 i did not understand the function of the financing honestly bart that 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 they were hurt and so we're considered essential. We are building and making money off of the program that was developed. Then why shouldn't we be supporting them? And I don't understand. I'm not just talking about, you know, signing up for a test and paying for our test. That's important. That's, that's what, but, but we should take our, our, our profitability and support it into organizations that are supporting us. Because I, and, I, and, my, and my whole hope is, you know, when I talked to you about it and I talked to Scott about it early on, I, I said my whole hope there was that we would, that other contractors would follow my lead and say, you know what, if, why do you always as a contractor look for what everybody can do for you? Why don't you say what you can do for your industry and that? And it's a fun, and so we, we said, hey, we're going to, as long as COVID was going on, that we were going to support CTEF, and, and then I've made a further commitment saying we're just going to keep supporting CTEF. Although I thought we were out of COVID in July, apparently we're going to see this game play out a little more. Yeah, this crazy world we're living yeah. in right now, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then ACT becomes that next process of, 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 of the continuing support because it doesn't just. So, so let me take you to it. A, is ACT going to get me another job? So if that's my thought process, doing ACT is going to get me more work. No, it didn't. Right. 
What ACT is going to do is give me a conversation, a continuous conversation within the organization to keep moving people forward to show it. Because if you don't keep people engaged in the process, then, then it's very easy to fall off to the side. And, and, that, and if you say, I accept mediocrity, then mediocrity is what you're going to get. But if you're going to, ACT says, this is excellence. And I'm going to keep pushing excellence and we'll keep training to excellence. And it keeps conversation and it keeps us engaged in industry standards and it keeps us engaged in pr protocols and keeps us up to date. It keeps healthy debate going on in the organization. And, and, and I, I want my young guys challenging me every day. Look, I'm old school mud. They're open more to, to newer products than I am sometimes. I don't mind listening to that, right? I want that challenge. I want them out there because if they're out there reading whatever manufacturer's literature and coming back to me to debate me, then I'm one. Yeah. So give me an example. I mean, this is a great way. Give me an example of the type of complexity of the type of high-end residential work that you guys do. I mean, you're training these your people because you're not just doing uh, uh, tub surrounds. I mean, you're doing some really complex work. I think you play an active role with your builder in introducing them to new technology. I know pedestal systems come yeah. to mind, balcony, yeah. I mean, deck systems and water management, both interior and exterior. So, you know, talk to me a little bit about the type of work that you guys do and why it's so important. You have people that are trained in both CTI and ACT. Um, so on the... You know, I hate using the term custom. But I like I like the term bespoke because that's really where we're at. Um, everybody says custom. I guess if you may change, it's custom and, and that. But you know, we're being the the design community is 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 in the marketing of the tile industry, be it a lot of different ways, is 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 challenging us every day to put in very unusual jobs. So in other words, we're intermixing slab components. And I don't let this mean a curb or a curb cap or a bench. I'm talking about slab walls into tile walls, into inlay, into curbless showers, into, you know, uh, uh, all this stuff that, that, that in some cases, uh, you know, we don't have the standard yet for uh, curbless showers over wood subfloor. Um, certainly a, a passion project of mine in the future. Um, uh, but, but these guys are doing advanced waterproofing that, it, that, 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 that we're working, uh, some of the higher end residential has moved into, um, into um, uh, uh, what I, penthouses and what I consider kind of commercial building, but it's residential. So, so water management, if that leaks, we've got a big problem. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it's not just it, there's a lot of liability. Thousands being, and thousands of dollars. Yeah, that. yeah, and and so th this um, uh, we've got to train to that. And the hardest thing we have to do in a world that is that that's that that is so uh, seconds throw something at you very sick. Let you grab and reactionary, and that is getting people to slow down and say we've got to do it right. We've got to back up. We've got to make sure our we've thought this all the way through as we perform it, because this is the hard part, Bart, and which is where the training becomes so important. You and I can talk very specifically and let's talk like or, or we're talking to any of the manufacturers very technically about a product, right? It's, OK, this product can allow me to bond a fiberglass stone in this job. And that, it's great. We're talking on this level. Is that being transferred down to the guy that's actually doing it, I don't right? Know. Is this waterproofing that we need to reinforce this waterproofing at this level being transferred down to the guy that does it? That's what scared me. That's what said we've got to make sure the lowest denominator. So we changed culture back a couple of years ago. I, I, I'm sorry, I keep going back. NTCA five star event. We're up in we're up at, we're up in Schluter in New York. We have Mike Moore there, right? Yep. He's doing conference about coaching your employees. We sit there and I listen to this conference again, being a member, taking advantage of my membership, taking advantage of what you've already built for me and that, and I'm listening to him and I, and I, and it, and it hit me. Um, uh, I, I, it hit me at the time that it says, we've got to concentrate on culture. We've got to, and culture needs to be in that. So I went back with, and we actually, and a couple of others hired Mike, for some consulting work about coaching, how to coach our employees. 
Right. And this was this was in a big picture I've got going on all at the same time, right? And and I sat there and I thought about it and I said, here's what we're going to do. I go, here's what we're going to do. The, in, in our way of thinking, we go helper, apprentice setter, journeyman setter, and then you move to master setter. That's that's how we've defined our program. I'm not. It can be anybody. You can define yeah. it how you want to. Some people that's say a great finish. way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can do it anyway. What I said is, here's what we're going to do. We're all going to be helpers. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the bottom line, the lowest denominator, because people want to say that. And we're going to give the most emphasis and the glory, if you will, to the toe. We're going to say the helper is low. And here's what we're all going to become. We're all going to become help each other's helpers. And that and that means that that. I can't do what I do without them doing what they're doing. And, 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 and that you could say it negative or mutually destructive, or do, well, I'll say it positive that we're mutually beneficial to each other to move an industry forward, to move uh, ourselves forward, to produce this beautiful work that we get to work in these incredible homes for, for really cool people. And we get to leave back our, our, our what we do, you know, and, and, and leave a legacy behind on every job that, hey, that's who we are. And, and you don't get to where we're at without a legacy. You don't, in other words, what I'm doing, I'm not open bidding. I'm not, I'm negotiating. I'm actually put, you know, we're not, we're, we're trying to figure this crazy stuff out. So that's how we get our jobs. We don't, we aren't out there cranking numbers. We're actually being invited into the process and then working to that. And then it's more of a, you can do this and this is what it's going to cost. So you can't, you know, so it's more budgeting, if you will. So it, it, it yeah, you're helping in the design build phase is what exactly you're right. You're giving exactly them right. options because you are the expert in that component of that house, right? right? That's the relationship you've cultivated with not only your builder, but their client. And, and yeah, their client, the architectural community that we work with in, the designer and community that we're working in, you know, th yeah. And, and I think that it's hard because it, um, I think some of them would tell you I'm a horse's butt and that because I, I'll say no and that no, this isn't going to work. No. And that's a hard thing for people to say because you think it's saying no hurts your reputation. Right. You, because your, your ego gets into play and you say, no, you can't do this. It's not going to work. And you're and you're passionate about it. And then I think people see the honesty and my conviction about it. And, and they'll say, OK, is there a workaround? Let's look at it. Right. It, it's, that's, it's, that's a great. It's not a no because I want to be negative. It's a no because I think, uh, you, you know, I, I, and then we kind of look at it because we do so much natural stone. But they'll say, hey, we want to dry lay out the floor. And, I, and, and so you say, and so what I've learned is to say, is say, okay, yes, we're happy to do that for you. It's $2,500. And they'll look at you and go, what? Okay, okay, my, my job is to install. My job isn't to lay out this floor for you. That's a service I'm happy to provide, but it has a, it has a cost to it. And Absolutely. So, so if you start looking at all those different aspects, and I know we've kind of gotten down a rabbit hole about this stuff, but, but if you kind of look at these aspects and you understand going back to that day when my dad said to me, know your value, well, okay, there's a value if I'm going to draw lay the floor out and that, or you can trust me, and most of them do, that we know how to work natural stone and let us do the artistry, which is our trade. So, so you have two ways of looking at it. And if somebody wants a control point, we're happy to give it to them. We don't refuse them. We're just saying we're going to charge you for, for those services. So that so. was great, by the way. I'm going to use that uh, uh, in, in a lesson about how to sell your value, the most important component. Don't let people push you around. Offer the service. The service is there. But like anything else, you should get paid for it because that's above and beyond the installation component of what right. you would agree to in the first place. All right, I got one last question, which is uh, centered around your workforce. Uh, I think you told me at one time that in the last couple of years, because when I talk to my members all around the country, one of the biggest concerns I hear is that we have an aging workforce, uh, people, and, and it's hard on their bodies, hard on their, their knees, hard on their skin, all of that. And it's an aging workforce and they're having a hard time bringing in young people. You got kind of young. How did you do it? And how uh, are you advertising, marketing, running things in Indeed? How, how have you gotten young? And maybe share a little bit with our audience about that because you've been able to succeed where others have been really telling me they're struggling. Yeah. Um, so, uh, too many taglines for 
I wanted to be the Google of the tile business. So what do I mean, right? Well, do you know of anybody who wouldn't want to have a job with Google? I mean, no. that's right, right? Because of the culture they built, they don't have to recruit. They just, people come to them in some senses, right? Well, why couldn't I build that in the tile business? It would seem like a pretty simple, maybe it's more simpler said, but I think it had more to do with an attitude I kind of came up with, right? And that we're going to be helpers. Front office, back office is to support front man crews. It isn't the reverse, right? Many owners come out and said, well, I, I moved these guys. The mentality is, is they work for me. No, 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 no. I work for them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there was, there was this reversal and culture. And then what can we do for them? I want that. So and, and the, again, I hope it's an example. Um, I supply every tool to every crew, every tool. I supply everything they use, every uniform period. I supply, uh, I want them to have the best, not the least. And that, 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 that says something that's not by one, it's by 11 I produce it. So I'm buying, I'm not buying things in ones or twos. I'm buying 14, 15 for breakdown, right? And that I want them to have, I am here to plow ground. So their job is the easiest thing in the world and they can perform it to the level which we all are expected to perform. So, we, so it's the focus is always, so there was attitudes like that. There was attitudes benefit wise, what could, 401ks. The benefits you know we can't get everything to them but we do everything we can and as we grow we'll continue and there's an attitude in inside the back office an attitude from me an attitude that they understand that that we're doing it we just finished up which we have to do the drawing this week so so here's let me give you an example of what how that how, what that kind of looks like so we did the Woody's TV, TV, summer TV extravaganza right stupid name hopefully it sticks what it was is getting them to fill out their time cards. We still have problems with that. It, their daily reports we use. Uh, we boy, I'm an advertising for NTCA, and that we use Busy Busy because yeah. I introduced it to us. It great. We were using a different program. Busy Busy is the best one we found, and I think all the guys we we're talking to have seen the same things we're seeing. Um, we use uh, Builder Trim for our CRM software. And that which it, we communicate through it, by it, and that that's the, that's how we go to business. And that, but we needed them to be better about their reporting. We needed that. So here, so how do you do that? You got two ways of doing it. You can go out there and beat them over the head, and say that you do it because you're hired by me. You do it because of this. You do it. You know, you you can. Or what we can do is say, let me give you. We're going to do a drawing. So if you do every one of your reports right every week, you get a, you get a ticket. And if you do your signing costs, so we did it for 10 weeks. So each person could get 20 tickets to get put into the, into the thing to turn that they were going to, you know, like a raffle ticket. Right. And that here's the thing. It was for $2,000. It's oh. winner take all. It isn't for 200. It's for an amount that means something. And that, and you say, well, why would I give $2,000? Or, or, well, did I? No, what you did that accomplish because you probably saved a lot more on the on the on, on the end result, right? Yeah. Right. So we build culture that way where they it doesn't look. It's nice. It, it it's not pretty always. It doesn't always look. I, I don't want to paint a, a picture that's unrealistic. That it it, it, it I, but but I also have realistic expectations as as long as we're moving the in the right direction. I'm okay that it doesn't always get 100% of what I want. I'm all, it doesn't mean that I'm always not looking for the, the perfection. I'm okay if we don't meet it. I just want to always make sure we're moving in that direction because honestly, you're never going to get there. So because, because, of, because of that culture, then people are coming to D.W. Sanders because they're in, because they're hearing about this from the your your workers right from my, their work, crews, their my crews. workers or my recruiters yeah. 20, so let, let, to give you some just base statistics we're 65 percent of the companies under the age of 30 my i have apprentices that are from 19 to 24 25 and that i have my journeymen or in the in the in the 26 27 now i still have some the, the trouble is if I, I've, I've still got my 40 year olds right so our next um for us um we we have a sister company that does restoration we're repolishing 
re, uh, um, we're going to, there's a lot of emphasis in the next year or so to build that division because I've got older guys I need to age out over yes, there. It's less hard on their body to do some of the restoration and they have that experience. It's a great, great way. Is that correct? Is that correct? Business model for maybe other contractor members of ours to look at, to, to consider. Is yeah. And then, and then we're looking for those new products, which you might have talked to, which pedestals, but, but culture comes back to Google, be the Google. What's going to make me different in my marketplace. And for me, it looks one way for another. We live in a marketplace that's tiered sub mainly um, that, 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 that it's kind of one extreme to the other. You've got the bucket and trial guys that do great work. Don't they? I mean, you see them. That's the guys that are, that are uh, passionate so, about what so, they do. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I appreciate that. But there, but but then I look at him. I said, "Yeah, but I, I, I think exactly what my dad said. How long can you keep doing that yourself? You've got to grow. It. And then if you're going to grow it, then then you've got to think, how am I going to keep other people, keep them healthy? You know, keep you, you know, it, it's it, Bart. It's everything. Every one of my guys have pro needs that I buy for them. It's not just. It's to the extreme. I'm taking everything with these guys. And it and here's the thing. It pays off." Yep, it does. I, I'm a, I'm more profitable than I was 10 years ago. I have, I have more capital to work with than I ever have in my, in, in, in the history of this company because in that, but it wasn't in, but it, but it, I think the hard part is to, is taking that first scary step and said, will I make the investment? Excellent. Well, listen, I just truly enjoyed this. I could go on and on with this uh, uh, discussion, and I, I look forward to further discussions with you. Congratulations on uh, the success of D.W. Sanders. Thank you for sharing what I think is always so important, which is uh, uh, as a member of an organization like the NTCAs to uh, really explore and look at the programs and services they offer and, and pick and choose the ones that work for you. Not all of them work for you, but to get the most out of your membership, I think is, is a message I, I heard from you loud and clear. And yeah. that doesn't happen unless uh, the commitment comes from the contractor member. The association can't do it for the contractor member. And, and you've been able to utilize our apprenticeship program, our online university, our five-star program, and, the, and what the CTEF offers. And uh, congratulations on that. So thanks Thank for you, being Paul. our guest today. Thank you so much. We appreciate always talk pal than that. So and please come see us. Our facilities are open always. We've been talking to Woody Sanders from DW Sanders, an NTCA five-star contractor out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. And this is Bart Bettiger with Tile Letter 1 to 1. Thank you for joining us.